blessings as we gather this All Saints Sunday. One of my favorite Sundays, actually, for worship this day. Hope this video helps you on this day. Hope you can join us in person for worship, of course. Um, this day, we'll remember those from our community who have died uh, this past year and uh, um, rejoice that they live in Christ. And also, we are going to look at how God calls us to new life today for all the saints, if you will, who gather. Let us begin with confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, our refuge, our delight, our beginning, and our end. Amen. Let us come in truth before the one who loves us and has freed us from our sin. Eternal one robed in majesty and mercy, we confess that sin has taken hold of us and we are complicit in his power. We are disturbed in spirit and our hearts cannot rest. Unbind us and set us free. Lead us again to the waters of rebirth that we may live just and generous lives for the good of your world and the care of our neighbors, following in the servant way of Jesus. Amen. These words are trustworthy and true. Christ bore our sins once for all on the cross, swallowing up death forever. For his sake you are forgiven, and God remembers your sin no more. Let your heart be glad again and rejoice in your salvation. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Revelation. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the, throne, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you've been here, my brother, Lazarus, would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved them. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you? that if you believed, you would see the glory of God. So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I've said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. This is important. 
It just is. First, for something completely different. Did you know right now, Eric Idle, one of the founders of Monty Python, is kind of on a book tour. I've seen him recently. And he's on this book tour because he wrote a book about the development and the writing of Spamalot, their hit Broadway musical. Um, and great show, of course, and he, he talks about it. And in these interviews, I found out that the number one played song at funerals in England, and Eric Idle complained because he gets no royalties, the number one played song at uh, funerals in England is Look on the Brighter Side of Life, originally from the life of Brian. As Brian sings it, as yes, he is being crucified. Look on the brighter side of life. Is that what we do today? Is that what we do at funerals sometimes? Do we tell people, look on the brighter side of life? On the good years, do we say, don't worry, they're all with Jesus now? I doubt very highly that they sing that song at a tragic funeral, at a suicide. At a young person's tragic death, a car wreck. And you tell me, why don't you? What is the cutoff? When is death too tragic that we just cannot sing that song? No, death stinks. There is a stench, Martha says. No matter when it is, what age it stinks. Even when it is at the relief of suffering. Even when someone has lived as long as we think they could possibly live. Even when they've lived a tremendous and prosperous life, death stinks. Death stinks. Sometimes, yes, it stinks more than other times, but it stinks, it stinks to high heaven. If it didn't stink to high heaven, why would Jesus bother with it? But what death? There can be many deaths and many ways of death. Not ways to die, per se, but ways of death. Those things that bring about death, violence and war, disease and poverty. There are those things that kill in other ways, anger and hate, prejudice and racism that can literally kill or just starve people out of true life, jealousy and selfishness that kills relationships. The wages of sin, after all, is death, death for the sinner and death for others as well. We hear the story from the Gospel of John about how Jesus comes this day to cry out against death. Yes, he cries out against that death that all must taste. The death rate in any country is the same as 100%. All die. When we listen to the story of Lazarus, we can be comforted that Martha is right. He shall rise again at the last day. We confess each week that we believe in the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Earlier in, gospel, in John's gospel, Jesus says this, quote, Very truly I tell you, a time is coming and is now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear we will live. Amen. We rejoice that for those whose names we speak today, their stories are not over. But that isn't the only death Jesus cries out against. He says to the sisters, I am the resurrection and the life, now. He will live, now. He is called to life in me and with me now, and so are you. Not simply in the life to come. Others are called to unwrap him and set him free. How powerful. Unwrap him. Unwrap the claws and trappings of death. Anything that would hold people in despair, sorrow, grief, or yes, anger, hate, prejudice, and sin, the ways of death. Jesus cries out, come out now. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am more powerful, more encompassing than death, and my compassion swallows death. Compassion that we see as he weeps. And Lazarus comes out. And as I have said before, and I'll say again, he comes out to new life. Can you imagine his new perspective? 
Can you imagine he and his sisters having the same arguments that they had before? Can you imagine him consumed by the trivial worries of life? Can you imagine him not being more generous, more caring, more faithful now that he has truly experienced resurrection life, new life? He is truly born again. There is nothing but nothing that can separate him from the love of the one standing there greeting him outside of that tomb. Nor us. Nothing. Including this Tuesday. Election. There is tremendous anxiety about this election, we know that. Now, we are all so overly sensitized today to any kind of language that sounds political. Now, you know that I'm not advocating for anyone from this preaching, this pulpit. My job is to talk about the promises of God, not politicians. So I ask you to listen carefully. If you want to read the manuscript later, I'll give you one. There are those on both sides of the aisle, on both sides, who believe that the United States might crumble if their candidate does not win. Listen to the rhetoric. There is danger of violence, of challenges to the results, and much more. I do not know what will happen. I cannot predict anything. I'm not going to stand to sit here and say, look on the sunny side of life, that there's nothing to worry about. And again, I recognize that people of all political stands worry about these things and fear for the future. I'm not going to tell you to trust the promises of the Constitution or certainly those of politicians. I cannot tell you that the promise of America might not crumble. In fact, history tells us that one day it will. What I'm saying, what I believe, is that the promises of God in the face of whatever happens on Tuesday will hold. That even if Tuesday brings what many people think is some sort of death, a tragedy, a disaster, that God's call to life is greater than death. That God stands outside our tombs and calls us to life, even in the face of death. That as the book of Revelation promises, behold, I make all things new. I wipe away all tears. I swallow up death forever, all kinds of death. Look, when Lazarus walked out of the tomb, he walked out into a cruel political society ruled with an iron fist of Rome that could crucify as they chose, a country where he might be persecuted for his beliefs. He was an alien in his own country, and yet he was called to life in his community of faith with Christ at their center. God is constantly calling us out, out of our tombs of fear, graves of judgment or hate, out of death to life. Around his table with each other, come what may. My vote is with God. Amen. Rooted in God's abundant love for the world, let us pray for our neighbors, the church, and all of creation. O God of resurrection, you call us by name and raise us to new life. Rouse your church from slumber, where we've held back in fear or shame, unbind us. Embolden us in our proclamation of your good news that all may know abundant life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God of the earth, you reign over all nations and peoples. Inspire us with wisdom and discernment as we elect legislators and leaders. May they govern with justice and uphold the dignity of all people. We ask especially this day for peace in our nation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God of heaven, we make your, you make your home among mortals. 
Come alongside those who weep this day. Befriend all who are lonely. Encourage those in despair. And heal any who are suffering. Abide with your faithful ones in love. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O God, who serves, you set before us a feast of rich food. Sustain our ministries of fellowship and hospitality. Strengthen the hands and hearts of all who prepare and serve food for our nourishment. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O God, Alpha and Omega, we give thanks for your faithful ones who are now at peace with you, whose names we will read aloud, those we remember fondly. With all your saints, we praise you, for you have swallowed up death forever. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We offer our prayers to you, gracious God, trusting in your boundless love for all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may Almighty God guide you, bless you, and walk with you in your holy and saintly lives now and forever. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.